Welcome to On The Way, where we explore the difference following Jesus makes in our lives. During season four, we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit, listed by Paul in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. On The Way is produced by The Baptist Standard, the donor-supported provider of news, opinion, and resources for living like Jesus. We're glad you're with us today. We have with us today Les Holland, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in San Antonio. Uh, we are so glad that you are with us. Thank you. Good to be with you. Eric, thanks for uh, allowing me to step into this important conversation. Oh, absolutely. Well, today we're talking about uh, the one of the fruit of the Spirit that Paul lists in Galatians chapter 5, and it happens to be patience. Uh, some of us who uh, remember a, a Guns N' Roses song by that name might have the tune going in our head, but uh, this is not, I don't think this is about that kind of patience, but at any rate. Uh, so let's just get started. What did Paul mean with this word patience? Uh, Eric, it's such an important uh, focus for us right now in our 21st century world, and particularly for us as Christians as we seek to get ahead of culture and not just lag behind culture. Uh, patience is trusting in God's timing. So that's my definition of biblical patience, is trusting in God's timing. Uh, in my office is a uh, needlework by a 15-year-old uh, girl from India who said, in the, the, the words in this needlework are, faith is trusting in God's timing. Mm. And it's uh, amazing but not surprising to me how many people who come in my office working through something in their life or for us as a church, they'll notice that artwork and say, that's exactly where we are right now, needing to trust in God's timing, either in our marriage with our children or decisions that we're making uh, as a church. So God loves us so much that he gives us a provision of his presence in time. You know, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, all who was, is, and will be uh, combining those statements from the John Revelation and uh, the book of Hebrews. So patience then is not simply um, saying, hey, it's, it's all going to turn out okay. It doesn't matter. It matters absolutely. And those, uh, those magical words of sprinkling, it's going to turn out okay, are very misleading mm. and many times harmful because there is a covenant by which things can turn out better redemptively in the presence of God, would God, how God can turn a downside situation right side up, and how, like out of Romans eight twenty eight, we will we need to partner with Him by loving Him, uh, trusting in Him, so that He can do that work to bring all things together, uh, ultimately for a good purpose. So patience is very much about connects to the character of our life, the character of our faith, into the goodness of God and trusting His timing. Yeah, when I look at that, um, I, I like to do word studies. Um, I'm not a Greek scholar or a Hebrew scholar, but I, I like to dig a little bit. And uh, the word that Paul uses, some also translate as uh, long-suffering or forbearance. And I don't much care for the long-suffering translation. I, I think I like patience a little bit more, but, you know, it's it's just a dodge, really. I mean, it's uh, it's amounts to the same thing. But it's interesting that this idea of patience has both uh, a passive and an active aspect to it. A passive aspect in the sense that uh, we, I guess one way we could say it is we sit and wait. Uh, although it's not necessarily that we sit and wait, but some uh, there is an aspect of that. But also it's active that, as you say, uh, it's not so much that we just like case or or what will be will be uh, you know it's going to be okay uh, but that we are actively involved in whatever is happening uh, and part of that act uh, that activity is is trusting in God's timing and being about our life in the meantime good insight um, and in terms of you know, looking at the root in in scriptures which is where all promises have to be entrusted from the character of God as revealed in Scripture. Uh, in the Hebrew, uh, hope and wait are synonyms. Mm. So like the, the famous passage out of Isaiah 40, 31 is those who 
wait on the Lord, or it can be translated those who hope in the Lord. So patience, again, is directed into the goodness of God, his very character, and then that timing of God by his presence that comes back to our life and says, okay, in the whatever is going on, this is what we can do and what we can't do. What we can do in the hoping we're supposed to do. Hmm. But what we can't do, then we don't get ahead of ourselves in a you know, satisfy me, I want what I want when I want it kind of culture that we live in. Uh, and that, and the difference between what we can do now and we receive now and what is still before us is, is actually the gap in which God grows us. And we can hmm. look at this as an opportunity for our next spiritual growth. Say, say more about that. I was going to ask you a different question, but hearing you say that where the gap is an opportunity for God to grow us, I'm intrigued by that. Well, um, the, the key and the call of God, I think, in our lives is to trust. Um, you know, the author of Hebrews and a tr very troubled uh, community and a troubled time of world history said, faith is the substance of things not seen, the King James Version. So the gap between what we have evidence that we can hold on to, see with our eyes, touch with our hands, uh, that that gap between then and now is where uh, God's promises say, okay, you're going to have to lean into me all the more. You're going to have to uh, trust me in this time of your life. And that's going to push buttons. And we get our buttons pushed, where we, you know, thinking mentally, or we're feeling in our heart emotionally, spiritually, we're looking at what all the resources we need to access or physically what we need to do. It's going to push all those buttons, like, I need to be doing something. And But when we've done all those things we can do, then it's taking the psalm who says, the psalmist, Psalm 46, 11, um, be still and know that I'm God. And so the waiting or the, the period there is where we can do our plateau growth. So we kind of catch up to the growth that got us to where we were. We get that, you know, reassimilated in our life, up to date in our life. And then as God shows us the next step we're to take, then we're ready to take that next step. Interesting. Yeah. We'll be right back after a 15 second sponsor break. Since 1952, South Texas Children's Home Ministries has focused on healing hearts and sharing hope. Their nine ministries focus on helping hurting children and families, all regardless of an individual's ability to pay. To find out more, visit www.stchm.org. Uh, a thought that comes to my mind is, is that this period of, of waiting, sometimes we think, if we picture it like waiting in line, uh, at the grocery store, you know, waiting to get our, our groceries scanned and, and get out of there. Uh, it, it, sometimes it feels like uh, we're just killing time, that there's nothing being accomplished while we stand there. And what I'm hearing you say is that this, these times where we are called upon to exercise patience, uh, that this is actually an active time in another way, that this is a period where if we will allow it, uh, God will make us good for uh, what is coming. That's really true. The, uh, um, you, I think of some of the great saints of the faith, uh, including writers like uh, Richard Foster, who said, you know, when we're waiting in the grocery line, <clears throat> it's a time to pray for those who are around us. Hmm. Just have a prayerful awareness of what's going on around us. Or I like to say when we are family member have gone to the graduation ceremony, whether by Zoom or in person, and all those other names get called, <laughs> what do we do with that time? And we oh, yeah. times, okay, it's seven seconds of name before the next person comes. And so it's a lot of throwaway time. Or we can choose to pray for each name that's called out, mm -hmm. picture their families, call out that name, uh, or have a prayerful awareness of what's going on uh, around us. Uh, when we're when we're checking out of where we are, that's a good. That's a, at least for me. That's a good sign that I'm being impatient. So, and my I'm, wife says I do that a lot. My oh. wife says, <laughs> uh, Vicky and I've been married okay. for 45 years. Uh, I've known her since I was 13, and mm. she uh, she says that. And you know, some of this 
is a pattern. My father, who was a really much a can-do man who died 20 years ago, wonderful man, great influence in my life. But uh, he was a very impatient man in terms of his own comfort zone, his own what's this world that was immediately around him. But in the in the the larger view for other people, he was very patient and helped hmm. good things to happen for other people. But when it came to his own comfort zone, well, my my mother suffered from dementia, so the last couple of years of her life, uh, dad was having to be much more patient than hmm. was natural for him. And that's uh, I I firmly believe, Eric, that. Um, our unfinished business stays unfinished until we finish it. And at times in the end of our life, there come opportunities to finish our spiritual growth that we didn't get to earlier in our life for whatever reason. But if we pay attention, we can get to it at that time in our life. Mm. I'm chewing on that. That's There's a lot in that statement. We'll be right back after this short sponsor break. High Ground Advisors has a 90-year history of providing investment management and planned giving solutions to churches, faith-based organizations, and charitably-minded individuals dedicated to transforming lives. High Ground is trusted by over 450 nonprofit clients, and we're one of them. High Ground has partnered with Baptist Standard for over 70 years by offering a comprehensive charitable giving and investment solutions model, which includes asset management, planned giving education and development, account support services, real estate and minerals management, and expert legal consultation. High Ground and the Baptist Standard share similar values, such as serving those who are called and dedicated to transforming lives and being a trusted caretaker of legacies. They also value good stewardship, helping those who desire to be good stewards of their financial resources to find creative giving solutions to fulfill that calling. We trust High Ground and consider them a loyal partner because they deliver the performance results we depend on to grow our mission. With nearly a century dedicated to the nonprofit sector and as a nonprofit themselves, they understand the needs and challenges specific to us. They give us the opportunity to work with people who share our faith and values. They come alongside our mission in ways that other investment management firms can't. They know that what they do to protect, strengthen, and grow our mission is ultimately in service to the gospel. To learn more about how High Ground can partner with you or your organization, visit their website at highgroundadvisors.org. So I want to ask uh, the patients that you've been describing, uh, how is that different? I, I think it's, this is maybe a leading question. I think it's qualitatively different, but how is this patient's different from uh, patients that we might be counseled to exhibit um, in a worldly sense? Yeah, uh, well, the, 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 I think the primary difference is uh, our patients, in order to be effective, most effective, effective mm-hmm. at that next level, you know, what's called the, in the scriptures, that's called the penultimate level, uh, to the moving from the penultimate level to the ultimate level, the highest level, is when we root it in the character of God, who mm-hmm. God is. You know, uh, so, for instance, uh, as a church historian, I've recognized that every generation of Christians has had, a, there's been a movement in every generation of Christians is that Christ is coming back in our generation. Yeah. So we think we're now forming the 102nd generation of Christians. We take 20 years for a generation. Well, there's an important urgency about God culminating history. And that is the, the culmination of history in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. But we have to be really careful when we over-identify and we try to not it work in the culmination of history uh, with uh, the Perugia the return of Christ to just our generation. That's kind of, that's over fixating ourselves and losing sight of this kind of larger vision of God. Mm. So there's a whole bunch of that conversation, but that's one example. I can give another example. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Shelton grew up in the hills of Kentucky where I lived for 23 years. Okay. And when they, when he was a boy growing up in the hills of Kentucky, 
uh, there was uh, some expression of people who had moved to the hills from the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains. So the understanding of come hope me was a way, their way of saying come help me. But hope and help were synonyms in that culture, which, I, which okay. to me is uh, a very helpful illustration. We do what we can do, when we can do it, as we can do it, which is how I define discipline to do what we can do, as we can do it, when we can do it, in God's timing. So the hope is, okay, is that now I can help you. God's coming to give his help to us now as we are. And all of these statements or illustrations that I've referenced very quickly are rooted in the character of God. Otherwise, the, the patience is only rooted in my human resources, which are important. They're in uh, the arc of history, that's important. But it's, if we understand that God creates the arc of history, as the Baptist preacher Martin Luther King Jr. would say, quoting a great, uh, a great poet before him, that the character of God is why we can trust in the arc of history. Mm -hmm. The character of God is why we can trust that there's in the economy of God, the whole fruit of the Spirit is rooted in the economy of God. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes. Well, the self-control is kind of a culmination in our growth that has, a, has its connection back to patience. That we're not getting ahead of ourselves by being out of self-control, but when our self-control is rooted in God's discipline of our character, God's timing then begins to fit together. So part of what I hear you say is that uh, patience in this sense has a direction. It has an object. It's uh, teleological, you might say. Uh, and so another reason why I think some people struggle with patience is because uh, they may not be clear on to what end. And uh, the patience that Paul is calling us to has an end. It has an object. Uh, it's rooted in God, in God's character and God's promises, but it's also directed back toward uh, God and God's character and God's promises. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, to what the end is what we call visioning. And, you know, in the life of the church, for instance, uh, we're responsible to s sense, see a vision of God. Uh, the word uh, prophet in the scriptures meant to be a seer, to see that, and then to begin to form plans that can help accomplish that vision. Well, we know the old saying, the old joke is, uh, you want to make God laugh, tell him the plan. <laughs> That's right. But That's I've right. also noticed that unless we're willing to to try to see the future, we can't see what God is wanting to show us. Mm -hmm. So it's like one continuous comedy routine. We get stretched into seeing some a glimpse of what God's showing us. We try to put plans with that, and then God, you know, does His uh, loving smile at us. And then we say, "Okay, all right, I didn't get it all," and so we do it again. And then He says, "Okay." We can get it all because in impatience we can trying to control outcomes and measurements and metrics they all have their place but if we get compulsively uh, addicted to trying to control mm -hmm. uh, then we you know we bruise the spirit of god we, we impatience keeps us from bruising the spirit of god uh, from by trusting in his character and his timing you just said uh, fixating on control, and it it brings a question to my mind. Uh, does patience then uh, signify in some sense a lack of control, or is it a, a letting go of control? Uh, or are those the same? Yeah, good question. Good question. Maybe the disciplining of control. I, mm -hmm. There is a part that we play. Um, I'll frequently say here at Trinity, Eric, uh, God will do what only God can do, mm. so we will do what only we can do. And so there is this kind of a harmony of our, our being active in our faith, uh, but doing so knowing that it's serving in God's timing in His ways for His purposes. So control is when we think, eh, God, I don't think you're moving fast enough. Yeah. We may not say that. But it's what we're feeling, and then we want. Well, let's go ahead and push this a little, a uh, little further. So, as parents, we know with our children, or grandparents with grandchildren, or Sunday school teachers who's teaching in children or youth class, there there has to be a lag time. 
between uh, the teaching mm -hmm. and the application. And so yeah. God is ever so patient. I think God's an optimist because he has patience <laughs> with us. And he gives us lag time to kind of catch up to the growth that uh, he has begun in our life. So Philippians 1, 6, but be confident and sure of this very thing, that God who began a good work in you will continue to perform that work right up until the time of Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's this whole rhythm of uh, patience and uh, action. Well, as we come to uh, to the end of our conversation, you've already shared a couple of ways that people can practice this kind of patience, uh, such as praying for those around us as we wait in the grocery line or uh, being mindful during a graduation ceremony instead of checking out all the names except for the one that matters most uh, to us, but perhaps praying for all those uh, individuals. Uh, some of whom are close to the one that matters most to us uh, and would appreciate those prayers. But at any rate, uh, what are some other ways that uh, we in our day-to-day uh, -day time or in that gap time, uh, some ways that we can develop this patience and grow uh, in this patience? I think it's one to be patient with ourselves. Hmm. Uh, so whenever uh, I get angry, which is a lot less now than it used to be, but it's been a journey for me. Hmm. When I get angry is to learn to ask the question, why am I angry? What is really going on here? And it frequently has something to do with an impatience. Hmm. Now, something may not be going on as it should be going, and it needs to be improved, and let's get after it, and let's make the improvement. But frequently it is, uh, I am disappointed in myself, or I'm disappointed that something is not happening around me that uh, I wish was happening differently. But when I get down to the root of it, it is like, um, is this anger in rhythm with God's timing? And then I come back to the moments. No, it's really not. Yeah. This is about, this is my stuff. It's my sense of wanting to be in control and needing to trust God with it. So to track down our anger and connect that to patience, I think is a really practical uh, mm. application. And the same when we, we feel frustrated, maybe not angry, but we feel frustrated with other people, is come back and kind of ask that question. And what patience will also enable us to do, Eric, as a practical application, it will calm our mind. Hmm. So like Philippians 4, 8, it will calm our mind so that if we're not, we're not losing those kind of neuron connections to impatience and anger and frustration, hmm. but we're able to calm our mind, we're able to see something larger that's going on here that we would have missed if we would have just got stuck in frustration. So whatever's good, loyal, trustworthy, loving, true, helpful, you know, think on these things. Well, thank you very much for spending this time with me and teaching us about patience. Uh, you've given us a lot to chew on. You are a wonderful conversational partner. Thank you for your leadership and among us as of the people of Texas. Thank you. Following Jesus is a way of life carried out over a lifetime. If this podcast has encouraged you to become a follower of Jesus or to follow him more closely, we'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this podcast or found it helpful, please leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts so others can find it more easily. Thank you for being with us today. On the Way is produced by The Baptist Standard, a donor-supported provider of news, opinion, and resources for living like Jesus. To make a donation, visit baptiststandard.com forward slash donate. To receive the Baptist Standard weekly newsletter, visit baptiststandard.com and click or tap subscribe.